Hello everybody. I decided to <laughs> do this update. Um, I am currently going to share with you my experience uh, post-op. Almost two weeks. Tomorrow will be two weeks uh, since my complete abdominal hysterectomy with right side oophorectomy. So as always, I keep it real. <laughs> I'm really just keeping it real. I just decided to turn the video on and talk to you guys while I had a moment and still had some clarity of thought and some energy. Again, I'll talk about what my energy's been like. Um, I'm a little snuggled up because I got the windows open and though it's really windy here. And um, let's see if we can fix that. Um, but sunny and spring-like outside, so that's nice. So I did a video, I think it was surgery day to day three really had intentions to do more videos between now and now then and now and really just haven't done that so I decided okay the closer I get to the two-week mark I'll do that and tomorrow will technically be two weeks out since my surgery um, probably just to note uh, again this is just me sharing my experience and what I have done and my protocol um, with my nutrition with my supplements and with my movement or physical activity. Uh, I see the doctor on Monday, um, so she will, you know, take a look at everything and see how I'm doing and, and go from there on what my restrictions will be between that mark and my six-week appointment. And I will see her uh, four weeks after uh, my two-week appointment. So what's been going on? Well, basically for, for pain management, once I got home, um, I was using ibuprofen or Motrin 800, prescribed by the doctor as needed. Again, at, at first they always recommend, I think it's every six hours, and if you need Tylenol in there, it's a rotation. Didn't really use the Tylenol. Um, I also was rotating it with, once I felt comfortable, uh, low dose microdosing of THC. Um, I prefer THC over CBD, but again, you have to know your dose, so you're not doing it as a recreational high type purpose, but more of a uh, uh, a pain relief and inflammatic relief um, situation. So I would recommend, again, doing your research on that. There, there are two different main types. Um, uh, I've done a couple different, uh, and I use gummies. Let me just say, I don't smoke it. I, I use edibles, which would in the form of gummies, and I microdose. And I actually found out what that dose would be for pain management prior to this, uh, again, with my last surgery. So, but I have not taken anything probably since this weekend. So probably say four to five days. I haven't been on anything. I've been off the ibuprofen at least five plus days and then microdose last, I think it was Sunday, if I remember correctly. I wrote everything down. I just didn't write it down for you guys. I apologize. But again, that gives you a little bit of a time frame. We are at day 14 right now. So uh, this, I guess, video will be an update from my last video, which was day, surgery day to day three, so we'll say day four to 14. So microdosing um, THC in the form of edibles and gummies um, and was using Motrin 800. I wanted to get off that stuff as soon as possible. Um, and then if I use THC, it's very random, uh, may occasionally be more recreational um, down the road, but right now, if I do need it, I have it available for microdosing, and that's just figuring out how many grams um, it helps with uh, pain relief or a little bit of energy stimulation without the the buzz or the head high or body high. Because again, two different types will give you both types. Do, do your research, guys. Do your research. And this is just my story, my experience, and what I've been doing. Um, fitness wise, now that we have more spring like weather, which is nice, it helps me feel like I can get out of the apartment. Again, I live in a 900 square um, ground level apartment, not even garden level, ground level. So I look out so I don't get a lot of sunshine down here. Um, so it's been nice just to get outside. Uh, the first week I was home, I did a lot of rusting. There were a couple of days in there where I did a couple of light errands. Again, this is just me walking around getting some groceries with assistance. I'm not lifting anything above uh, five pounds at this point, at least any more than just a couple of feet or inches, you know, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But definitely not supposed to be lifting anything, no exercise, no, no, nothing like that. 
So errands, you know, things like I can't drive right now, so I'm dependent on other people. Um, Sunday until now, I've been home alone, uh, overnight alone. Um, my uh, partner slash boyfriend has come in and helped me with a few things and spent some time with me. I had family over the weekend, but I've been completely 100% alone. My son is with his father. My dog is with my, with his, with my son's father. So I've been alone at least four nights and in my space alone, minus a few hours here or there. Yesterday we did some errands that needed to get done and a little walk. So I've had each day for the last three days, if I remember correctly, um, one to two mini walks. And for me, mini walks is anywhere between a half a mile to a mile a couple times a day. I try to do one maybe before lunch or after lunch and maybe early afternoon, depending on my energy level. Again, my walks are dependent on my energy level. I'm trying to listen to my body, but I'm still trying to move around as much as I can tolerate. Again, that's everyone is different. Uh, everyone's uh, physical fitness is different. Everyone's experience is different. I am very healthy. I eat really good. I physically, before surgery, very healthy. That's why I attribute to my health um, being so good right now post-op and the fact that I'm healing at, at a good rate, um, healing at a good rate internally and externally. Um, mentally, emotionally, that's been some challenges with a few things, but again, that's, that's going to come with the, that's going to come with the territory, territory. Okay. So like I said, just up until just a few days ago, I was just basically any movement or walking has been done inside or to walk to the car and to come into the house. That's that's it. Um, again, but again, increasing my walks. Again, I think I am able to walk a little further and a little longer because of my my abilities beforehand, before surgery, because I was so physically fit beforehand. Um, I, I would recommend myself, if I'm recommending to clients, you know, if I had a client that was in the situation I was, I would say start at five minutes a day, focus on time, not distance, and go at a pace that's comfortable for you. And if you don't feel safe, make sure you have somebody walking with you. I didn't, I didn't start walking in, unless I felt comfortable and safe. So, um, and like I said, my partner slash boyfriend, uh, we went for our first little mini walk just so I could tell if I was able to handle this alone. And I was. So I've continued um, one to two mini walks a day. I only did one yesterday because we were out doing some, like I said, some air and some grocery stuff. And so I got some walking in there as well and so my walks right now are averaging the first couple of days was like I said a half a mile to a mile now they're about a mile to a mile and a quarter mile and a half at the max I don't even know if we got a mile and a half total and time wise it's probably depending on my pace you know anywhere between 2 and 2.5 miles an hour I do wear my Garmin and it tracks my distance and my speed and that's going to be anywhere between 2.0 to 2.5 miles an hour so it's a leisurely pace I am wearing good supportive shoes outside. I'm wearing comfortable clothes, you know, loose fitting clothes. I always wear my binder. I have a couple different binders. Uh, like I said, the one that the hospital sent me home with and the one they invested through Amazon. If you are curious about that, I don't usually put a lot of that information below, but you can more than welcome comment below and I will uh, send that information or put that in the comment as well. It's, it's, it's information that I have gotten from other women um, that they had suggested. I also wear very uh, supportive undergarments. So I also purchased very high waisted supportive um, undergarments that were made for uh, post up abdominal or C sections. Um, so I make sure I wear that while I'm walking. Again, with the weather being um, in between right now, um, just make sure you're not getting overheated, you're not too hot, and you're not too cold. Um, again, and I do it according to how I feel. Yesterday I was really tired, you know, fell asleep really early, slept in. Uh, quite a bit. So I'm, I'm averaging probably about eight to 10 hours of sleep a day. Um, sometimes I, I, I get a nap in there, maybe 30 to 40 minutes. I fall asleep, um, but not typically. I don't, you know, I thought maybe I would have a nap today. I might still have one. Um, I might not. I might just go to bed early tonight. We'll see. So had my walk this morning, um, and this morning I did it in a fasted state, coffee, um, and a little bit of MCT oil, and I just wanted to change up, and I'll be constantly changing up 
my nutrition protocol with my macros, my carbs, my fats, my proteins between now and the end of my six weeks, again, six to eight weeks, we're going to average, I'm going to just say eight, two months is what I'm going to say from my surgery date. And, um, definitely be playing around with my, my, my macros according to my hormonal, um, calendar as well. Cause I am still tracking that to a degree. Again, things are different because I'm not having a cycle, but I am still tracking those fluctuations with the one ovary I do have left because it will still mimic um, somewhere, you know, the perimenopausal symptoms, menopause symptoms, but you're still cycling. So you will still have those ebbs and flows in your progesterone, your uh, uh, estrogen, your testosterone, and you have to also make sure to keep your cortisol into check. Um, the other reason why, guys, I think that my inflammation has been greatly reduced is a, a few reasons. Um, without a lot of pain medication is I eat right. I eat foods that support, uh, for the most part, there are some foods like uh, whole grain breads and rice and things that can cause a, a slightly more inflammation in the body. But again, because I was really healthy and eating really well before, that's why I can tolerate it better now. Some people, um, they're over consuming any form of franken foods or processed foods are going to have more inflammation in their body and more pain in their body. Inflammation equals pain. Understand that. Please, please, please understand that. That's why I think I've been greatly able to reduce my uh, medication a lot sooner than some people might be able to. Uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but right now, like I said, I eat a nutritional protocol, a very high in uh, fruits and vegetables. I do green powders um, up until today. Uh, today was my first day I had a salad and probably since before surgery um, because of the digestive things. You want to take it easy, easing back into certain foods. Um, so I do a lot of green powder to still get all the nutrients, vitamins, and minerals from things I might not be able to consume. It's basically an insurance card and my multivitamin and, and et cetera. I also do plant-based protein powders and like a collagen protein type of a supplement as well, a powder. Um, I also use um, things like essential oils. All these things help with inflammation in the body. Um, I'm also on a regular basis now tracking. I was uh, doing serpeptase. I have been doing serpeptase. I actually did serpeptase prior to my surgery to see if it helps was, help, was helping with some of the adhesions that I was experiencing when those adhesions get out of control and fibrous things can cause more pain in the body and inflammation in the body. So I did slightly start to notice before surgery, even with taking the serpeptase, which is a proteolytic enzyme. Again, do your research. I am not a physician. I'm just suggest, you know, do your research. It's been around a while. So now post-op surgery, I've definitely, once I came home, I started doing my regular supplements again, my greens, powders, my protein powders, because again, I haven't really been eating a lot of animal products to get protein, eggs, things like that. So I want to make sure I'm still getting, I'm not doing a high protein. Again, I'm easing into it. And the reason they're doing the serapeptase is that's going to break down any dead and senescent tissue proteins and things like that and recycle them. They will recycle it for uh, a new use, right? Or energy and things like that. Again, do your research. So serapeptase I've been doing high doses. Uh, how do I take that? I uh, recommend they take it 30 to 60 minutes before a meal on an empty stomach with a full glass of water um, or two or so, two to three hours post meal. Again, uh, two to um, with a full glass of water. So my protocol for that is four to five capsules. And the capsules that I'm taking, there's a variety. The low range is 40,000 SPUs. And I think you can get a, one, a capsule that's up to 225 SPUs per one capsule. So the capsules that I'm using are 120 to 125,000 SPUs. And I usually take four to five of those capsules first thing in the morning, full glass of water, and then before bed. So again, I, I usually close my, my eating window between five and six right now. It's been pretty consistent with that for a while. Again, some days it doesn't happen, but on a consistent basis, it's more so than not. Um, I believe that is also pro uh, helping me progress um, 
pretty well with my, my, my healing process. Again, it's helping with anything that's going on and breaking any dead and senescent tissue. I'll help with any prevention, any extra scar tissues and adhesions. It breaks down fiber and helps prevent, helps prevent blood clots. It helps with just natural blood flow. It's also known to help with sinuses and bronchial stuff. So there's a, there's a great deal of the benefits that comes from serapeptase. So pretty much, and it's also used as an anti-inflammatic and pain reducer. So Technically, that would be more of a naturalistic, besides Arnica tablets and Arnica cream that I've been using um, as a uh, naturopathic way to help with inflammation and to reduce pain. Um, Food-wise, it's been really weird. Food's been really weird for a couple of weeks. I just kind of kind of go on like on intuition. Again, very intuitive prior to um, versus. Some people that go into surgery, they're unhealthy. They might be slightly overweight. Their fitness level might be lower. They may not understand nutrition very well. So they might have more problems post-op, um, nutritionally and physically, mentally and emotionally, because food and all of that plays a huge factor, huge factor, okay? Typically, my calories right now are averaging about 15 to 1600 calories. There's been a couple of days where it's been a little bit higher, but it's been a little bit higher because of the fat consumption on those days. Again, I'm, if I eat more fat on a day, um, those calories totals is usually a higher. I also notice some days my appetite's a little bit higher than other days. Um, so I just can try to be more intuitive about it. Yesterday was a really food day, really weird food day, because typically I have some small snacks right now post-op and then like a meal um but being home alone it's been really hard and energy wise to want to even do any type of food prep so i try to keep things that are easy to make like protein oats you know tunas um hummuses nuts and seeds um coconut fat um avocados a lot of a lot of avocados um, if fruits would be like apples and berries, sometimes some protein smoothies that might have some mango or pineapple in there, you know, just things like that. Really simple, quick and easy, um, stuff, um, whole grain breads, um, and, and, or whole grain bagels, um, things like that with grass fed butter. Just very simple and easy to do. Now I'm going to, again, like I said, play, I'm going to continue to play with my nutritional protocol as part of this recovery because I want to share that with you guys as well. And I think that's very important to incorporate and to start transitioning. Um, this would actually be a great time to slowly start to transition off of any toxic foods into more, so more healthy foods because you actually find that you'll feel better, you'll sleep better, you'll heal faster. Um, and this is just my opinion, but I, you know, this is regardless if you've had surgery or not. So, um, today I was, had a little more energy. So I, I food prepped today. I, I cooked some chicken that I had thawed two days ago and I cooked it in, um, some bone broth with, I wanted more of a uh, Latin slash Mexican feel. So I do some red peppers in there, some tomatoes, some onions and garlic, always onions and garlic with everything that I do. I have no aversions to that. Um, and spices, cumins and corianders and chipotle pepper and um, cayenne. All these things promote anti-inflammatic in the body. It helps fight inflammation in the body. I love spices. Other spices I use on a regular basis are turmeric, ginger, cinnamon. Um, all of these things help prevent and fight inflammation in the body as well as do... A multitude of other things um, that, that that's it, that's amazing so I had a nice salad today had some romaine lettuce some cilantro I'm um, the only raw food again I'm trying to stay away from a lot of raw food because of the digestive it's a lot harder on the digestion again my bowel movements have been amazing again I do a lot of things to help support that because that that can be a problem post-surgery as well so I don't want to do a lot of raw food so I do a lot of cooked food still and the only raw food was basically the lettuce and cilantro. But because I put hot stuff on it, it kind of warmed it up and helps already to break down the cellulose in there. So it's, it's a little easier to digest. And I also take a digestive enzyme to help support that as well. I've, I've taken digestive enzymes on and off for a multitude of years now. 
because I've had issues with digestion and gut issues for many, many years. And I find that's very helpful taking, depending on what I'm eating, low dose or high dose of digestive enzymes. They're very supportive and therapeutic. Again, do your research and make sure you're getting high quality of anything that you're doing supplementing with. So this morning, again, I had some MCT oil and coffee, went for a walk, had my salad for lunch, and it had avocado and cashew cream cheese on there, um, some vinegar. You always want to pair an acid with your meats, guys, whether it's like lemon or lime juice, which it was the chicken was cooked in lime juice, and then I added a little balsamic vinegar. Um, that helps break down the meat. If you're doing a lot of animal products, I suggest adding those acids in there, apple cider vinegar, coconut vinegar, anything to help break down those meats because you don't want things to rancidify and putrefy in your gut. You want your body to break it down to get those amino acids, to get those proteins to help with rebuilding and repairing the damage that was done, whether you're working out a lot or whether you just had surgery. Okay. Um, Post-lunch, I had um, a coconut, coconut chocolate caramel. So I've had a small piece of chocolate or uh, um, a plant-based like a caramel every day. I enjoy my chocolates um, and I get high quality chocolate. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just keep it in moderation. I'm at a point in my life where I don't have overly abundant amounts of cravings. Again, it's the types my lifestyle has a lot to do with that. Um, but I do enjoy a little bit of chocolate. Um, if I want something more, you know, sometimes I'll have some fruit. Fruit's a great alternative. Um, grapes or anything that's in season right now. Uh, just make sure you're not food combining improperly because that could cause more digestive problems. And right now you want to have the most optimal digestion that you can because you don't want to cause any upset or constipation and things like that because it can be very uncomfortable with all the healing that's taking place. Everything's rearranging itself in there, making its room. You had an organ removed. You got to make sure to make things and support things, not just externally, but as well as internally because there's internal healing that's going on and that will take a while as well. Um, I'm again, six to eight weeks, if not a little longer. And to get back to where you were prior to, like for me, Physically, I'm going to give myself six months to a year to get back to where I was. Again, I'm going to be have to train differently. Not 100%, but there will be some training adjustments. There will be some recalibrating when it comes to when I re-enter my physical fitness activity, when I start lifting weights and, and riding my bike long distances. There will be some recalibrating and figuring out what I can and can't do and if there are any limitations from the surgery. So that's, again part of the healing and the mental and emotional aspect of it as well. All right, so um, we talked nutrition, we talked a little bit of fitness. You need to get up and move, guys. You need to do it as much as possible. So if you're suffering a little more with pain and inflammation, you need to do a little less, just do it a little more often. Um, I feel like right now, I think too many walks a day is really good. And once I see the doctor, um, We'll see what happens. I'm having some weirdness, not pain, just weird sensations up in my vaginal canal. Canal Again, when they remove the cervix and they remove the uterus, they do what's a vaginal cough, so everything is stitched closed. Um, so it just those sensations could be um, the healing process. Again, it's not pain. It's just weirdness. Um, what else? Um, definitely more little right-sided sensations of discomfort and feel like bruising even though I'm physically not bruised on that side um, again that internal whatever took place with the removal of my right ovary um I just is trying to keep this under 30 minutes so we're at 24 minutes right now what else did I want to talk to you guys with in this past couple weeks yeah it's been pretty day to day is pretty much the same showering um Wound care is pretty similar. Coconut oil and tea tree oil for that. Let it breathe. I wear my, I I've been wearing my um, support around my stomach more so when I'm up, like taking a walk. I've wore it a little less the last couple days. Um, I've been trying to wear it a little less sleeping, but we do weird shit in our sleep, so it's just that safety precaution in case you move wrong. I have been physically been able to sleep a little bit more on my side, completely and 100% supported with a shit ton of pillows. 
I am a stomach sleeper slash side, not even like a side sleeper. It's like in between a side sleeper and a stomach sleeper. So me getting in and out of bed has been a challenge because you have to be really smart. There's a, a process how I do it. Sit on the bed, turn on my butt, get my feet up, you know, versus just climbing into bed. You really have to think about things sometimes in, in, in being very careful. So I've been having to sleep on my back more so than not. I've been fairly, I think, get, able to get some sleep. Um, the quality of the sleep is, I, I don't know the, the answer to that question. Um, again, the energy just ebbs and flows. Some days I'm a little more tired. Some days I have a little bit more energy. Um, sometimes taking a shower is extremely exhausting. Sometimes just like today, making lunch was completely exhausting. You know, just to prep the meal, let it cook and then go back into the kitchen and then prep my lunch. But you know, once I got you know, go and I was able to, and I, you know, opted if I felt good enough, I would take a second walk. If I didn't, I wouldn't. Well, I felt okay enough. Once I sat down after my lunch and rested a little bit, I talk, took another little mini walk um, today. So that felt really good. So all I can say is guys, eat right as much as possible. Even if you're eating processed foods, please make sure that they're, sorry, I had a little twinge. They're getting this weird twinge. Um, take a walk, take some laps around the, you know, your space, um, get up and move every so often, um, eat right, eat whole, natural, organic, real food as much as possible, as many single ingredient foods as you can, if you're doing whole grains, make sure they're organic, as least processed as possible, doing rice, brown rice, things like that. If you're doing, um, I do a lot of rice cakes right now. Um, I had been up, you know, but after surgery is about all that sounded good. There's rice cakes out there, organic, organic, organic. You wanna reduce the pesticides, you wanna reduce herbicides. You wanna reduce any uh, chance for any extra chemicals or toxins to be entered into your body because your body starts, it doesn't understand that and it's trying to go after that and trying to heal. You wanna remove as much obstacles from your body as you can as possible so you can heal as fast as possible and feel as good as you can each day because we know if we feel good, we're gonna move a little more, we're gonna eat a little better. Usually when you eat a little better, you feel a little better. When you feel a little better, you move a little more. So that's important, movement, simple movements. As the weeks go on, I'll keep you guys informed. Um, I, I'm hoping that I'm okay to start doing some gentle, maybe restorative yoga if, if I'm feeling okay, which is basically not flow. It's basically restorative. You're sitting or laying down with um, supports, with props and things like that. I'm hoping to maybe start incorporating that with my mini walks next week. But again, this is all dependent on doctor and all dependent on me. Again, you need to listen to your body. I definitely don't want to create any issues to prolong my healing process or to create any opportunity to have a prolapse because that's kind of terrifying to me too is, is to have any type of a prolapse where my vaginal canal isn't healed properly and then my internal parts start coming out of that area so we're, we're, we're going to prevent that and that's you know can be caused by doing too much and especially from heavy exertion or heavy lifting that can be you know, what can cause the, the, the prolapses. All right, guys, I think I'm almost to the 30 minute mark. I'm hoping this information has helped somebody. Um, to all my histocystas out there, I hope you're doing good. If you had had a hysterectomy, if you have one coming up, I will do my best. Again, I am a personal trainer, group fitness instructor, holistic health and wellness coach, a nutritional coach. Um, I've been doing this for almost 11 years. Again, I don't know it all, I only know some things I'm always doing research and if I have questions I research I research and if I start finding information that's kind of correlating in the same direction then I kind of lean towards that but again I'm also my own guinea pig n equals one experiment I do a lot of things in my own protocol to see if it works for me and if it doesn't and sometimes that's what life is about experimentation in a safe understanding way love yourself give yourself a little grace a little gratitude and thank your body because we don't thank our bodies enough. We put them through a lot, but we just don't give thanks to them, you know, enough. So you guys have an amazing day. This is March, let's see here. We're March 11th. Tomorrow will be two weeks post-op. So hopefully you guys, good luck. Love you guys.
Talk to you soon. Bye.